Hey everyone, thank you for checking out another video. This tutorial is gonna be pretty short and it's gonna be about visualizing flow fields. I don't really know how to go about explaining what a flow field is without showing you how it's used, but I'm planning on saving that for another video. The basic idea is that we're gonna generate noise values at coordinates, just like we've done in the past with simulating elevation, except now the only thing we're gonna use those noise values to do is rotate a line. You can see an example of that here, and if you look at the lines that are neighboring each other, all of the changes in rotation are very gradual based on the gradual changes in the noise, specifically Perlin noise in this example. You can think about each one of the lines that you're seeing as kind of a directed force. So ideally in the future, you'd be able to take thousands of particles, drop them in randomly on this flow field, and then the direction of each point or each cell would affect the particles as they move around and it would create this really cool effect. But this is just kind of a basic structure to begin with and I'm going to show you how to make it in just a few lines of code. So I think the example that I just had pulled up, we have to, I think it was 50 by 50 is the grid. So cell count, we'll just start here with 50. We have to calculate the size of every cell since really it, it's still a grid they're still just squares in a grid. We're just drawing the lines. Since this is, I'm gonna keep the image a square, so 1000 by 1000, so you can either grab the width or the height and just divide by cell count. And then since we're gonna be working with per lin noise, I'm gonna define a noise scale value, just like always, because we need to zoom in on the results of the noise. If you need more information about Perlin noise, I'd highly recommend checking out one of my earlier videos on that topic. We're gonna to step through the grid. We already know what the cell count is. So for X in range cell count, for Y in range cell count. We're gonna actually generate the noise. Processing makes it really easy to grab that. It's just the X and Y coordinate, but we have to multiply the X and Y coordinate by the noise scale. We can, we've already set the color of the line. I just wanna start by drawing the line, just so we get an idea of where we're at. Cell size zero. So if I run this, nothing's drawing. And that's because we're drawing it. Oh, so let's say that we draw this at X times cell size. Y times cell size, and then this would be X times cell size plus cell size. This is not the way that we're going to do it. I just want to show you kind of a step-by-step -step process of how we're getting to where we're going to go times cell size. Okay, so right now we just have lines straight across. It's not one continuous line. It's still in a grid. You just can't see it right now because we're not applying any kind of rotation. In order to rotate everything individually, we have to make sure we're rotating around the origin of the cell itself and not rotating on the origin of our image. In order to do that, we need to translate our origin. We're gonna move from zero, zero, and we're gonna make our origin the actual origin of that cell. So we're literally gonna say translate X times cell size, Y times cell size. So now that we've translated to that point, we can call zero, zero, which is the origin, but we have a new origin. Hopefully that, hopefully that makes sense. And then we can just call cell size. Now this shouldn't work for other reasons. The reason that it's not going to work is because every time we translate, we're not resetting to the origin, the actual image origin before every cell. Processing makes it really easy to kind of erase your settings and move back to a previous state. So before we translate, we're at the image origin of zero, zero, and we can call this function called push matrix which means we're just taking where we are, we're pushing it onto the stack so that later we can pop it off and we'll just reset to that. So after we translate and we draw a line, we just wanna pop matrix 
and we should be back to where we were before. Okay, we're still not rotating, but we are translating to every cell and then drawing the line. Now that we've done that, we can start rotating right before drawing the line. It has to be after we translate, so we make sure we're, we're rotating around the new origin. We can call rotate, and let's just do random to pi to begin with. Okay, so you can obviously see that the rotation is working. It doesn't make any sense right now. It's not doing anything. Uh, it's not doing anything useful. We're definitely not creating. I guess it technically is a flow field, but it's not a useful flow field. So we want to control the gradual change in our rotation between the cells. And we've already got this noise value that we're not doing anything with. So let's set a rotation variable. And we're going to multiply our noise value. Just a quick reminder, this, this variable will be a value between 0 and 1. We already know that the full rotation is 2 times pi. So we can just take this uh, value and multiply it by 2 times pi. And then when we rotate, we just rotate by that value. And then, just like that, we have a flow field. Super easy, just a few lines of code. The only thing we're really doing besides drawing lines in a grid is just making sure we're applying a noise value to a rotation, translating, rotating, drawing the line. Hopefully you can kind of see on your own where this would go if you were actually using these points. I don't really know what to call them, these vectors within the flow field to affect particles. You just need to keep track of their direction. So we would have to store all of this. Right now it's just being drawn. It's just a visualization and that's fine. Just to take it a step further, I'll show you a little bit more that you can do to make this visually appealing. I'm going to copy in some code for a color gradient function that I wrote a while back. I wouldn't worry about this too much. I do talk about it in another video if you want to dig into it a little bit more. I'm just going to copy this in. It's basically just a function that's going to give us a value between two colors. It's like my own little gradient thing. And we're going to use this noise value for that. And we'll set the stroke to get color, or I think it's get gradient point. Get gradient point. Color. I also copied in this array of, or this list of colors. Color zero, colors one. So the way this function works is that I pass in two colors and then a step and max steps. And it's just kind of seeing where we are, like where is step in max steps. So we pass in, so the max steps is going to be 100. We have this noise value that's from zero to one. So we're going to multiply that by 100 to kind of normalize it with this value. Setting the stroke, and then if I call it, oh, these colors are not what I want. So let's do 255, 20. Okay, so the, the goal is to have kind of a gradient between red and blue. It's very difficult to see with such a large, or such a small dimension grid. So we're gonna bump the cell count up to 100. And then you can kind of see it start to fill out a little bit. Let's actually go to 200. Yeah, now we're getting some really cool results. Hopefully the video has been helpful. I'm excited to talk more about these flow fields in the future. If you did learn something new or you enjoyed the video in general, maybe think about hitting the subscribe button. I am getting close to a thousand subscribers, which is pretty cool. I've been doing this for a little over eight months now. And it's been a lot of fun. I enjoy making the videos. I enjoy seeing that people are actually learning things from them. So if you've been watching, thank you very much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.